everybody. Welcome back to the Army Girl Knits podcast. My name is Emily. I'm coming to you from northern Texas where I live with my husband and three children. Um, I also work here as an accountant um, and I like to do anything fiber arts in my off time. Um, I don't have a whole lot to show you because this past week either I was sick or my daughters were sick and it was, it's been a really long week. So didn't really get a whole lot of knitting done, um, but I do have a finished object, which is really exciting. But I figured I might start off a little bit with telling you a little bit more about myself. I didn't really talk about myself a whole lot in episode one, so here we go. Um, should we start off, let's start off with why I named it Army Girl Knits. I was in the Army, I think I may have briefly mentioned that in episode one. I was in the Army for five years. Um, I worked as a mechanic and that is actually where I met my husband. He was also a mechanic. Um, it had its ups and downs and I miss it. Um, I was a specialist when I got out. My husband uh, medically retired back in 2011 as a sergeant and so after I got out in the beginning of 2012 after I had our youngest uh, we came to Texas where my husband now still works as a mechanic and I went to school to be an accountant a big change from being a mechanic going to mechanic to accounting so but I love it um, I now work for an oil guy um, he's great the job is great I work I'm by myself in a little office and I do everything from payroll to um, getting ready for taxes and doing all that kind of stuff right now. I don't actually do taxes though, so that's good because they're crazy busy right now. Let's see, my kids, I have three lovely kids. I might try to insert a picture in here if I could get a good one of them because they kind of go crazy when the camera's around. Um, my oldest is Riley. She turned nine in December. She is the spitting image of me. She... She drives me crazy. Jake um, is my son, he looks exactly like his daddy. He's my shy and quiet one. So if I ever need some quiet time or some just nice solace, I just go and cuddle with him for a little bit. Aubrey is six. She also turned six in December. December is a very busy month for us. We have like five or six birthdays as well as my wedding anniversary in December and Christmas and all of that jazz too. So it just gets nuts. Um, Aubrey is crazy. She does not care about anything. She's hard to discipline, but we love her. She's cute. Um, if you hear them screaming, that's because they're cleaning, helping clean each other's rooms right now and it's not going too well. So really why I called it Army Girl Knits, I couldn't actually could not come up with a name. I, I'm i originally from Minnesota, so I was trying to come up with a fun name that had Yankee in it. Well, my husband didn't like that because he says I'm not really a Yankee anymore and I'm just, I'm like, I'm a Yankee at heart, I'm, you know, so it just, it bantered back and forth with my mom trying to come up with something and then I'm just like, you know what, I'm just going to use one of my old usernames that I used to have on Xbox or something and it was Army Girl, so I just kind of stuck with that. Um, I got into crocheting when, let's see, I think my mom taught me, started teaching me when I was about six or seven years old and I'm now 33. So I've been crocheting for a long time, um, off and on. You know, I, I, I used to go through kind of spurts where I, would, I wouldn't do it for a year or so and then I would just really get into it again. But the past few years since I've gotten out of the army, um, it's been really helpful for me. It's, it's a stress reliever for me. Um, as well as knitting and spinning. Uh, I got a spinning wheel a couple years ago for Christmas and so I've only been doing that you know for about two years. I'm not too good with that. Knitting I've been doing for three. I just find anything fiber arts wise just to be absolutely amazing um, when it comes to me just needing to take a step back and calm down. I do struggle with um, depression off and on and I've found that Oh, th and there's my dog. Um, I do struggle with the, with the depression and stuff like that every once in a while, but I found that medicines just didn't do it for me. So I, that's when I started really just picking up crochet and a whole lot more and wanting to learn new things like the knitting and the spinning. And it's really helped me out a whole lot. Um, 
sorry for all the ums, but I don't have it all written out. So, <clears throat> um, also recently my kids have actually shown an interest in crocheting and wanting to learn how to do that. So uh, we're kind of struggling right now cause they're just, they want to be able to do some of the things that I do already, even though they don't have like the chain down yet, you know, so it will, they'll improve. I just keep telling them to practice. And as soon as they get the chain and the single crochet down, I'll teach them how to start doing other stuff. My oldest really wants to do knitting, but I'm not really that good at it yet. So I figure I'll just start her off with some dish cloths or something like that. And cause that's something I could easily teach her, but it's really, I enjoy it because they want to learn from me, they don't want to take a class, which is good, you know, kid mother bonding time. And I really appreciate that. We just need to do it more because, you know, life gets hectic. And like I said in the last podcast, right now we're doing Girl Scout cookie sales and all of that kind of stuff too. So it's just, you know, you just got to have that extra time. However, sorry, my dog's over there and she's kind of making me nervous. But anyways, so I also think it's important though that these kids learn how to do this because not everybody or it's kind of a dying art really, you know, not a lot of people know how to do this kind of stuff anymore. Like I remember um, my stepdad's grandma or mom tried teaching me how to knit when I was about nine or 10 years old and I just could not figure it out at that point. But these are, I mean, I know my oldest daughter, um, goes through kind of bouts where she's down too and so I just want I think it's something like it with me that it would help them you know and concentrate and learn different things and it's an art form that I definitely think needs to be passed on so we try we do our best even my son likes to do it he'll sit there and he makes these huge long chains um, out of yarn and he just absolutely loves it so that's a little bit about me and um, what not. So should we get on to the finished object? Ooh. Last time I showed you my Christmas Eve cast on was my bam. I've got two, two. I did de do these with, um, Mina Phillips from the knitting expat, her two at a time socks. And so I got them done, which is super cool. They um, don't fit very good. I mean, they do, they're a little tight and the toe I needed to start sooner than what I did. Um, but like I said, this is my first pair of socks. So I don't think I did that bad. And even like, see, we've got, I've got a couple holes that, you know, which, but I'm still really proud. And I was super excited when I got these off the needles. I was so proud of myself. My husband thought I was crazy because I was hooting and hollering. It was super, super exciting for me. So that is my finished object. And I think oh, the yarn was, I believe it was like a Cascade 220, something like that. I think I threw away the tag, but I believe that's what that is. So, with casting those off, I decided to cast on new socks. I ordered this yarn. Let's see if I can find the tag. I don't think I, oh, I kept the tag from Lolo Did It. Oop. Lolo Did It when the Vikings won their, one of the playoff games. And it's the Purple People Eaters, which is definitely Vikings. I ordered two skeins of it because me and my mom are both fans and it's super pretty. I love the colors. I think the purple and the yellows and there's even some pinks in there. Love, love, love it. But I had to cast on socks, of course, because now I'm addicted. And here they are. I am doing, it's just a two by two rib 20 rows, and then I'm doing the Hermione's Everyday Socks, sock pattern that's on Ravelry. Um, and I'm having a lot of fun doing them. I'm really loving how the colors are just, with kind of like little, tiny little blobs of pink in there. But the purple is great. The purple is so bright in some spots. And I'm really, really loving it. And I got my little 
Deathly Hollow is Progress Keeper on there. Um, and I'm really starting to like, I, I have some higher, higher sharps and I've got some, I know I'm gonna botch this, some Luka needles. Um, but I actually really enjoy doing socks on my Chow Goo needles. Um, I know the cord, a lot of people complain because the cord is really thick, but I kind of like that. It's, it's not so, I don't know, but I just, I enjoy it. I do have some that are on high highs too. I like them as well, but I just, uh, these just feel more sturdier to me. And I don't stab myself constantly with these ones. But yeah, these are my Chow Goos and these are uh, sized US 1.5 or 2.5 millimeter needles that I'm doing these on. But I'm really liking how these are working out. And these are actually going to be for my mom. And then after I'm done with these, I'm gonna make myself a matching pair. And then it'll go in my box of socks. <clears throat> and this I have in my Outlander bag that I got from the Twisted Yarn Fiber on Epsi. And I'm a big fan of Outlander. It's my favorite show. Favorite show. And let's see. I, I showed these last time, but I've made a lot more progress. Actually, I had to rip them out because they didn't fit. I tried them on and it didn't work. But these are my wrist fiber socks that are by Mina Phillips as well. Um, it's her uh, socks or sock uh, patterns that she has coming out every other month. And you can kind of see, let's see if I can get the lighting's not the greatest. You can kind of see the little swigglies going down as the, for the pattern. So I'm ready to put the heel in now. Um, but I'm gonna try a different kind of heel than just like the German short rows. I might try the fish lips kiss heel because everybody keeps raving about it. <clears throat> so I think that's what I'm gonna try doing on these and we'll see how that goes. But I'm definitely addicted to this whole sock knitting thing. I can see how this is just, and again, this is um, Gnome Acres, Gnome of the Lake fingering sock. <clears throat> and that is the only other sock I have on here. Uh, now, last time I also uh, mentioned I crochet and I had a pattern or a graph gan that I was doing. Excuse me, need a drink. And I was doing it just in single crochet and I wasn't really liking how it was turning out. And so I ended up frogging the entire thing. And I decided to do a corner, ooh, sorry do a corner to corner afghan. Let me here, I'll show you the graph just to kind of refresh if I have it in here. Yes, I do. It's this for my husband. So each little, each little square is gonna be one square on the corner to corner. And I'm really not very far, but it's gonna be awesome. Super, super stoked to get this. So I. Like I said, I frogged it and I started all over. Make sure I don't get my bobbins all messed up here. So each color I've got on a bobbin or a spool. Um, so I got my green, I got my black, I got my light green. I think that's all I've got so far. So, so you have these <clears throat> that you wind up because of how you work it, you gotta put it on the bobbins. And let's see. And this is what I have so far. Sorry about the. So I'm starting to do the BDU pattern here. You can see it's gonna be awesome. I am super, super excited, but look at all the ends. Oh, I do not want to sew all these ends in. So I think before I start getting onto this again, I'm just gonna sew in all the ends that are sticking out so far and just kind of do them as I go because if I wait until I'm done with this whole thing and it's gonna be huge I'm probably gonna have to order more yarn because I think I'm gonna run out but that's okay I'm really excited about it and I know he's gonna love it and that's another thing it's gonna take me a while because he's always around at night so it's like I'm gonna have to kick him out of the house for like a week to put a dent in it I bring it to my mom's 
whenever I go over there and I work on it a little bit, but it's gonna get too big pretty soon to even bring anywhere. So, so that, I'm really liking the corner to corner. See, it makes kind of like these little squares. And I'm just, and then you work up from the corner out. So it's going to be massive, but that's okay. It'll be really comfy. And this, I'm actually, I love this bag. It's a tote bag. I cannot for the life of me remember what the lady's name is that I bought from. But we have a, it's called Lavender Ridge Farms over here. And they have um, little like craft fairs and stuff ever so often. And I, when I saw this bag at this lady's booth, I about died. Look at these zombies. It's like old diner with zombies. Oh, it's great. I love it. I think it's so awesome. Brain burgers. And then the inside, I'll show you a little bit here. The inside is like monster newspapers all over it. Um, and it's great. It's a great big tote bag. Perfect for big projects. Love, love. Oh, and I forgot to say, uh, I believe this, it, this is Caron United yarn that I'm using. Perfect for this project. Every a little bit of the proceeds go to Fallen Warriors um, children for their high, or for their college funds, uh, which is great. The great cause. So that is that one, and I think that's all of my whips, really. Um, like I said, I was sick, so I didn't really have a whole, you know, I wasn't really feeling um, doing a whole lot. But I have an FO, so that was really exciting to get those socks off. But I have, excuse me, I have a few new stash enhancements. I spoiled myself a little bit while I was sick. I was watching the Grocery Girls um, podcast. I can't remember if it was a newer one or if I was watching some older ones. And you know how they have their sock talk. Well, they were talking about a couple books. And I love books, I love to read. Um, and I love knitting books, I've got crochet books, I've got spinning books, I've got all sorts of books. So they talked about a few books on their podcast. And so I, figure since there were a couple issues with this sock like the ladders and these holes you know I figured I'd, it'd be cool to get a book and so they recommended a few and so I went on to Amazon and I actually found them for a pretty decent price um, and this is the first one getting started knitting socks by Ann Bud sorry about the glare there um, I haven't really had a chance a whole chance to read through but I've skimmed through and they've got some nice patterns in here um, different types of uh, heels, a heel flap and gusset, heel turn, you know, heel turns, working in the round. They've even got some patterns I'll show you, that you that they give you um, to start off with basic socks. So definitely gonna read this. See if I can fix some of my my little issues that we have. And then see it has some different rib patterns. So I have, I definitely think this is going to help a whole lot, which is really good because I want to make some nice socks because I'd like to do socks um, for Christmas to people and stuff like that. And then the next book I got was the Sock Knitter's Handbook by Charlene Church and Beth Parrot. The reason I want, I like this book is because it's got these graphs in the back. Let's see if I can get to it. Mm -mm. Like it's got foot and measurements for children and it goes up to women and men and it's just sizing. So you can just look at a shoe size and it even says it's got it broken down into narrow, medium, and wide. And then it helped to, has um, it broken down into like the length um, in inches. For the leg, heel flap, heel to heel to toe, the toe, and the total foot length. So I thought the charts were perfect. It would help a lot. So 
Because if I want to do them for gifts, you know, I don't, I'm not going to measure everybody's foot. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm really excited to read through these. But it's got a bunch of different, like, it has bind-offs, different bind-offs that are good. And some kind of cool looking for like my kids my girls would like those cuffs right there you got the rolly cuff so so those are my new books so i'm so excited to get digging into these real fun let's see yarn or should we do we'll do yarn last let's see what we got so these i got oh, shortly after um I podcasted last time and oh I feel bad because now I don't remember who this was I'll put it in my show notes if I can figure out I'd look on my phone but that's what's recording so I got this progress keeper it is ooh, it stops moving I see it's like a little cameo I don't know why it's not focusing focus focus no it's a little cameo. Ah, oh, that's really hard to see. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I thought it was, it's bronze, like a bronzed. Maybe I'll try taking a picture of it. Um, got that progress keeper, and it came in a cute little tin, like this. Somewhere to keep my stitch markers, which is perfect. Can never have enough containers. Let's see. Oh yeah, this one. This one is from Charmed and Dangerous. Stupid glare. I haven't quite figured out the whole... No, it's not going to do it. I've got a better camera coming. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> and it is a little succulent progress keeper. And I love it. It is super cute. It's kind of shiny. And it's on this heart that it's made to look like a rock. And it's not heavy. I thought when I saw it after I opened it, I thought it was going to be heavy, but it is it is super light. So it's not going to drag down any of my um, stitches or anything like that. So that's exciting. There's that one. And let's see. Ooh, I got some enamel. Pin. I got an enamel pin from Andre Sue Knits. I forgot to show this last time. Andre Sue Knits, um, she's the one I got the sock blank from. That's got the bam and the pals on it. So I had to get an enamel pin because I have enamel pins. I've got army pins. I've got all sorts of enamel pins around my room. And so I figured I'd get on the bandwagon with the knit ones too. I don't think I'm going to put them on my field bag though. We'll have to find. I'd like to get something back here to put all my pins on. Now the yarn. Oh, I didn't get too much yarn. You need to get out. Let me finish. Let me finish. So this first one I got from Valkyrie Fibers. You see her logo right here. And it came with a little progress keeper. You really need to get out. And I got her LNZ. Because I am a big nerd. I love Doctor Who. I like LNZ colorway. Doctor Who. Super excited to turn this into socks. Super, super excited. And it's so soft and squishy. So I got that one. And then I had pre ordered this a while ago Sweet Sparrow Yarns. There's a little tag and it is the Hedwig colorway because I love me some Harry Potter too. And this is so pretty with the speckles and the grays. So I'm super excited about this. It's superwash merino and nylon, probably some socks. And then uh, a little while ago, I somebody told me about the um, traveling yarn company and I saw them on Instagram and they have a yarn club and so it's like $20 a month and you get a skein 
and I got my first one and I'm super excited. There's their logo and it's super pretty. I love the blues. Parts of it are kind of denim-y. Love this part right here and then it's got some lovely speckles and stuff going on here. And this one is called Whistler. It's a Travel Buddies Club exclusive and it's 7525 Merino Nylon. And this will probably end up being socks as well. So, yeah, I just love the blues. I just love them. See, denim -y, lighter, and speckles. Who doesn't love speckles? So, yeah, I think that is it for stash enhancement wise. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I was going to go over. That's what I was going to do because it's going to be a short episode. I was just going to kind of go over and maybe insert pictures of my Make 9. I have issues with finishing, uh, well, last year I did, with finishing all the Christmas gifts. So I decided to include on my Make 9 some of the Christmas gifts that I was planning on doing. Um, not all of them. Some of them are going to be for me. Like the flax sweater from Tin Can Knits. So I'll insert a picture here. I'm gonna do that one because somebody said that that would be a really good kind of beginner garment um, pattern and plus it the pattern comes in sizes from baby all the way up to I think it's like 4xl so I can make my kids one and all in the same pattern which would be great and then the next one is a Christmas present my mom fell in love with Fiona the hippo from I, it's one of the zoos. I don't know. She was all over Facebook for the longest time. And so I'm going to make her Roxy the Hippo from Lauren of Lolo Did It. It's her pattern. Um, you can find it on Ravelry. I think you can actually find it on her website as well. So I'm going to do that. And I'm probably going to do it from Lolo Did It's Yarns that she recommends. Um, then I'm going to do, it's called... The Protest is Patriotic Shawl by New York Craft Craftivist. Um, it's a big American flag. I'll insert a picture here for that as well. It's like an American flag shawl. So, and I'm, I consider myself to be pretty patriotic. So, and I love the shawl. I think it looks awesome. And I'd wear it all the time. Um, that one's going to be for me. The next one is also a... I keep looking at my show notes here, so excuse me. The um, the next one is also going to be a Christmas gift. Um, I'll insert a picture of this one here too. The donkey by T Cruz T C T Cruz Designs. I bought it off of Etsy. Um, my brother-in-law loves donkeys. I do as well, and so when I saw this pattern on Etsy. I just I had to buy it and that's the one that I was supposed to make for last year that I didn't get to um, because I had to make my brother one of the I made him the AT AT um, that I also bought on you can I think it's I think I put it on my Instagram if you want to go look there at army girl knits um, I made that for him and it actually took me a lot longer than I planned so I didn't get to the donkey um, the next one is going to be the, it's a penguin sweater. I saw it. It's on yarnspirations.com. My sister loves penguins, loves, loves, loves penguins. And so it's just a sweater. I'll insert a picture. So I'm going to make that for her for Christmas this year and probably some socks because she loves socks too. So, so number six on my list is the Selbu mittens from, by Scandier Knits. I love the color work. I've never done color work, so I'm probably gonna do some kind of pattern that maybe is a little bit easier to start off with when it comes to color work, and then graduate up into the Selbu mittens, but I'm gonna make those for my mom for Christmas. And then the next one, um, I'm actually gonna make two of. My dad and my brother are both big hunters. My husband as well, but he doesn't really wear hats, so I'm going to make them the frolicking deer You can find it on Ravelry. I think it's absolutely hilarious. I'm gonna do it in hunter orange and black um, so they can wear it while they're hunting. And I think they'll just die when they open it. 
And then next, let's see, number eight, I am going to make myself the Jody shawl. Um, it's by Hohio Locatelli. You can find it on Ravelry as well. Uh, if you want to see one, I know the Grocery Girls, it's the Jody. Jody from the Grocery Girls is who it was designed for, and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and lastly, number nine, it's going to be the Bird's Nest Blanket um, by Tammy DeSanto. It's on Ravelry. It looks, it's like this big fluffy, fluffy blanket. I think that probably will be the first thing that I decide to work on <clears throat> um, from my list because I love me making, I love making a blankets. I do. And it's going to be a big project and that is going to be, ooh, keep bumping the camera, I'm sorry. And that is going to be for my other mom that lives here in Texas with me because she just changed the colors in her, in her house and so the blanket that I made her doesn't go with anything anymore. So I, she needs an upgrade. So that is my make nine. I will make sure I put pictures in on for everything so you can see them and I'll put see if I can put down below or I'll put in my show notes um, where I found them and possibly maybe what kind of yarn I'm gonna use. So that's it. Um, gonna have to start doing some editing. Gotta edit some of this stuff out because you probably won't see it because I'll have edited it out but my kids have come in here a couple times sitting here staring at me from the door what are you doing what are you doing so we'll see how good my editing skills get today so thank you for watching um hopefully it won't be as long for the next time that i podcast like i said in the first video i'm not sure if it's gonna be like every other week that i'm gonna do it or every week i think it's just gonna depend on how much i have time for right now at least until girl scout cookie season is over because on the weekends i just i don't even have time to do anything for myself anymore really so uh, so thanks for watching and uh, hope you enjoy. Bye.